From a carbon point of view, what happens is when a grass plant is grazed and it's a healthy grass plant, within seconds of it being grazed, it starts to want to get back into balance. So it sloughs off root material. Okay, and the root material that it sloughs off is 58% by weight carbon. When it regrows, it basically sucks carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. And if the graze and the pulsing happens properly, it's boom, boom. Okay? Unfortunately, the process works in reverse as well. So if we're degrading the land, it's actually sucking it out the other way. I had a soil scientist say to me, I don't get why people don't understand soil carbon. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, you know, this whole measurement thing, and does it exist? He said, it's simple. Carbon is black, the dirt gets darker. So as you build up soil carbon, you get a darker soil. And if you look at that, you've basically got soil coming down to the root zone. Okay? Now, in nature, we haven't got a process to come around with like little scissors and clip tops and bottles of trees and plants and things to get the whole thing going. So what nature do is nature has big grazing herds that come through. When that herd comes through, all that grass that's recovered and grown like this has got root mass above and below ground. They come through, they chomp, they dung, they trample, the root mass drops off, carbon goes back into the soil, feeds the microbes, it's the whole thing rolling again, and the herd moves on. Okay, and that's a critical point, that the timing and the recovery, and Alan will talk more about this, but we haven't got that and we can't, can't control wildebeest, and we can, certainly cannot control kangaroos and emus. Okay, so what we can do is use grazing animals. That's a friend's property, 50,000 acre property down in Naranda in New South Wales. That's about 3,000 cows and calves on a daily move. Okay, and if you look at that, forget the colours, you've got exactly the same behaviour pattern happening. Okay, all the animals are moving left to right, they're all just happily chomping and away they go. Okay. Variability. Okay, this will be quickly through, we're going to now focus on an individual grass plant. Okay, for some interest. So variability, we're talking about climate change, we're talking about, about changes that are happening. Okay, if you have a look at this, this is Longreach's last nine years worth of rainfall. Okay, from the Bureau of Data. Now, the pale, paler parts of this are your median rainfall, not your average, your median. Statistically, median is in, in half of the years you've had more than this and half of the years you've had less. So it's really your average rain. Okay? If you have a look at it and you go back each year, yeah, that was pretty much what we'd expect. That's a lot less than what we expect, then next to nothing, and then all of a sudden we've boomed up here, then we're back down, then we're right up here. And what we've got is we've got this erratic pattern happening the whole way through. So the interesting thing about adapting and dealing with climate change is that what you're going to have to adapt to and deal with is what you've been dealing with for the last 10, 15, 20, 30 years anyway, which is intermittent rainfall events. You look at the variab variability here, that's what half of the time we get that, we've ended up with this. Half of the time we get that, and we've ended up with that. Okay, now if you're going to be dealing with that, what would you do in a garden? Anybody who's a gardener, if you're going to be away for a while, what would you do? You'd water everything up and you'd mulch the garden. So one of the questions before was soil cover. Okay, and if there's you know, two words that are critical in this thing, in terms of adapting to climate change, any grazing ecosystem is soil cover. How do you generate covered soil? Okay, we saw before some of the data, the um, perennial grass plants. The, more, the closer the perennial grass plants, we're building soil carbon. So the whole thing starts to come back together. The good thing about agriculture is it's the one industry where the mitigation activities are exactly the same as the adaptation activities and they're all positive. Okay? Other industries don't have that. So This is um, Brian Wilberg. He did some monitoring. He watched an individual grass plant for about five years. Very patient man. Not watched it every single day, but he came back to see what was happening. Okay, this is on the Pets family over at um, Injun. All right, so this is four days after the start of the season. You have a look at the grass plant. So this is just observing what happens with one grass plant and watching this growth curve, okay? And just thinking about what would happen if you had set stocking in this paddock or if you didn't give it time to recover and these sorts of things, okay? So here it is, it's four days after the start of the season and that's, that's the bloke we're watching his thing, sorry. Oh, he's got, that's, we're watching that one. Okay, he's gone in and he's grazed it by hand. I.e., he's basically pulled the leaves off the top of the thing. Okay? Let's see what happens as we go forward. Okay, so, and observe, what do you notice in the paddock? Okay, this is one day later. There's not much difference with that plant. These are all happy. Two days later, you can see it's just starting to recover. It's starting to grow back. At this point, it's barely vulnerable, isn't it? So it's just, it's already had a hit. It's, it's lost some energy. It slops off the root material. It wants to start to regrow. Okay, and if it sticks a couple of little leaves up and it gets hit again, what's it going to do? Well, not die straight away, but if it, and it get hit again and it got hit again, eventually you give up. Okay? So three days later, a fair bit of material in there. Okay? And the interesting thing is what's happening down in this corner? A little perennial grass plant staking his head through the, grass, the, the covered soil. Okay? 
Four days later, he's about where he was. He's recovered pretty much, and this boat's coming through, and we're starting to get some, some little seedlings. So we're talking about perennial grasses starting to appear. Six days later, pretty tempting to put something in the paddock now. I mean, there's a good lot of feed in there, but these guys are coming through, and there's another one poking his head through here. 11 days. Okay, and this is that sigmoid curve. The thing's got big enough, and just look at the amount of material that's increased in six days to 11 days. 16 days. Okay, so that's five days from then <coughs> to then. Okay? And all these plants, there's more little perennial grass plants starting to stick their head through. 22 days after. Okay, now good question for you. Tell me the difference between the grass plant there and the grass plant there. Well, you start with, with the leaves. Moisture stress. Okay, it's starting to moisture stress, so the plant's starting to slow down. So that's the thing to adjust in terms of how you're planting the moves. Okay, the plant's slowed down, it's not growing as fast as it was. Okay. 31 days after day, the day before the cattle come in. So in 31 days, that's the amount of material you've got. Okay. And look at these little perennial grass plants coming through. So in terms of soil carbon building and offsetting the methane emission, we've now got closer spacing of perennial pastures. We put the cattle in there for one day. Okay, and they've gone out. And the fascinating thing in this one to me is that all the material on the ground has started to get crumpled and broken up. But have a look at these little blokes. They're pretty much untouched. So the baby vulnerable perennial grass plants have had a whole herd of cattle go through and because the animals have gone through, eaten the developed stuff and then moved on, they're ready to keep going. Okay, 14 days later, look at this one. That's the one that started growing what, 60 days ago. Okay. 31 days after the cattle graze, we're back and started again. Okay. That's, the, that's the thing, that the same spot next year, like about 13 days after growth started the next season, and look at the amount of material, all this through here, and you can see that the soil cover from last year has been decomposed. So you've got a very healthy microbial activity, you've got a healthy soil thing in there. Okay. So those 13 days, boom. We had a comment before that it's not a permanent thing, you can recover from it, okay? So for whatever reason they've overgrazed the thing, clogged the hell out of it, and that's what they've created. Okay, so we've gone from that and thumped it a little bit too hard. Okay. Now the interesting thing, we've got a lot of bare soil there, we've got a lot of ready, stuff ready for things to grow. Okay. What starts coming through? Weeds. Okay. So we start to see weeds through there. We allow the thing to grow, the grass plant starts to increase and we've got less weeds. We move forward that day before grazing, there's not a problem with the weeds because the grasses have overgrown the things. Okay. That's the day after grazing, we leave it a little bit longer. We've got a lot of seedy, you know, it's gone into a reproductive stage, a lot of seedy material there, it's all waste. 23 days after the grazing, day 64, that's all the material there is soil cover for next year. So the critical thing is, in order to have some cover on the soil, you've got to grow something first. To grow something, you've got to give it a chance to grow. Okay, so that's the, that part of it. Um, really quickly step through this. All right, so some commercial parts of this. What I'm not talking about is we need to destock and we need to cut our numbers down and we need to spend a fortune. Okay? This is 16 inch rainfall zone in New Mexico. Okay, all that yellow stuff is a thing called snakeweed, um, toxic, totally unpalatable, etc. etc. Okay, so they've got 11% um, snakeweed, but there's actually 40 to 66% bare ground, so totally uncovered soil. 1986, four years later. Okay? No poisons, no sprays, no nothing. So bare ground's now down to 30%, so there's now 16% more covered soil. Snakeweed's down to 1%. Nine previously dormant perennial grasses, the ones that build soil carbon, have returned. And 10 feet of water in a well. The critical point is, herd size and beef production per hectare doubled. The cost of producing a kilo of beef decreased by 50%. Twice as much beef at half the cost per kilo. This is a pretty good outcome. Um, some friends just sent this through there down at a place called Bukara Plains down in Bawara, okay, which is some fairly hungry country and it hasn't had a good run. Um, traditionally a heartbreak block like carrying capacity, etc, etc, not considered sufficient economically to maintain a family. They've now got 7,000 hectares, they're about 100 paddocks, so they're able to do fairly regular moves. Um, greatly improved impact on country that's currently selling for between 150 and 200 per hectare. Our fence and water costs in total amount to less than 30 bucks a hectare, including the bit that we haven't finished. Okay. 